Okay, well, I, I grew up on the east side of Indianapolis, and um, when I was 18, there was absolutely nothing going on in Indianapolis as far as I was concerned. I, I didn't think there was. So I left, and I was gone for about 10 years, and then I came back um, in 2007. And one of the many places that I went while I was gone was Chicago. That was the last stop before I came back home. And while I was there, I participated in the Renegade Craft Fair, which is, it's, it's grown even more since then. I believe it started in 2003, and it's this amazing fair of over 300 different artists, and they set up in the Wicker Park neighborhood of Chicago, and it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, there's a lot of young crafters making contemporary things. It could be that they've learned something from a grandparent or a parent, and they've kind of put a modern twist on it. So, while I was there, I was very inspired by the group of, of men and women that I got to know through that. Um, and when I came back to Indianapolis, I was, I was pleasantly surprised by how much had happened and how much had changed in, in Indianapolis since I was gone. In the 10 years that I left, I, I saw when I came back an amazing art scene. I saw all sorts of different um, parties and social groups and uh, First Fridays had started here and um, you know, Big Car Gallery was a big thing and Orange had happened. I mean, there were just so many things that I don't remember anything similar when I was younger. And it could have just been that I was too young to really be involved in any of that. But one thing that I didn't see here was a contemporary craft scene like I saw in Chicago and a lot of other big cities. So when I came back, I wanted to start something like that. And my then boyfriend, now husband, um, encouraged me and helped me get it going. And we started the Indiana Handicraft Exchange, which started out as a, a very small affair. We held it the first year in Irvington. And um, we only had about 40 vendors. But I brought in some people that I had seen at Renegade in Chicago, and I contacted a lot of local crafters from around the city, and everybody set up their booths, and we held it in conjunction with the Irvington Halloween Festival. And the first year went pretty well, and uh, the event was well received, and we were contacted by some people who wanted us to bring our version of the craft fair to their event. Um, we got invited by the Harrison Center to move our event permanently there and start having um, First Friday uh, handicraft exchanges there, and then the following year we grew it into a big summer show. Well, the, the event went so well and kept growing that at some point I started entertaining the idea of making it into a career and, and possibly opening a store someday, and at the time I was teaching, I had gone to school for art education, and so I was teaching elementary school art, um, and the third year that I was teaching, I started hearing that they were going to lay off some art teachers, so I really started you know, building a business plan and thinking about what I could do and how I could make part of the craft world a full-time thing for myself. And so um, we heard about Pachachka, which I don't know if any of you are familiar with Pachachka. Um, it's spelled, it looks like Pecha Kucha, but it's actually pronounced Pachachka. It's a format where they have um, each speaker gets 20 minutes, no, 20 minutes, two minutes for 20 slides, I think is what it was. But we, it was a competition one year, and you could win $10,000. And there were several different amazing groups that went up for this, and we had really high hopes that we were going to win this $10,000. It was part of the Spirit Place Festival. Um, and this was in 2009. And we went up against um, Growing Places Indy, which are the, is the group that ended up winning. It was um, Laura and Tyler Henderson. And they got the money for a, an urban farm in White River Park. But you know, there was a lot of really great groups, and we had high hopes that we were going to take away that $10,000. And so that was our first idea of how we would make this store happen. And we faced this disappointment because we didn't walk away with that money. But um, my father has this, my father loves saying perseverance is good. And it's one of those things he said for years and I've always kind of, oh yeah, 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 dad, I, I've heard that a thousand times. But I, over the course of trying to develop this career for myself um, as, a, as a local business owner, as an entrepreneur, I've really taken that to heart and I've started to uh, think that in my mind more and more often. I have to kind of remind myself of that when I get frustrated by a snag in our business plan. So with that first disappointment of not getting the money, which I had already kind of planned out what we were going to do with it, um, I let that go and we started planning again. We applied for a business loan. We got rejected for that. Another big disappointment. Um, we applied for a Pepsi grant. They were giving away millions of dollars. And we did win a Pepsi grant, but it, it, we won a third of what we thought we were going to win. Um, because of some snag in their program the first time around. So, you know, we got a little bit of money and it was able to get us going, but we weren't able to do it kind of as, as big as we wanted. So there were all these ups and downs into getting the store going, but in July of 2010, we finally were able to get Homespun Modern Handmade open. And uh, 
our original goal was to have the store, the retail store, filled with handmade goods from all sorts of artists around the country, as well as a workshop space in one, but the space we were able to get wasn't quite large enough to do the workshop space. So two years later, we just opened up the workshop space as well. So now in Irvington, we have a retail storefront that has about 200 different artists from around the US and Canada. We sell all of their goods on consignment. And then we also have a workshop space where we're able to teach crafting and art classes, small business classes, um, any kind of activity class, and provide that for our community. So, um, you know, at this point, I, I'm not making anything. People come into the store all the time and they ask me, are you making anything? What did you make in here? And we have these lights that hang from the ceiling and that's about all I can put my name on right now. But I've, I've made the business, I've grown the business, and so that's a really big reward for me. I get to interact with um, all of the artists that are speaking tonight work with us. So. You know, we get to work with fantastic people from around our city. We get to develop relationships with creative people, and we're constantly forging new relationships. And we have great customers. You know, that's when I was in high school. I never thought that I would ever want to work in retail. It was the furthest thing from my mind. But um, I, I love it now. I love all of the customers that come into the store. I love the employees we have. I love the artists that we have our relationships with. So. It's the best possible thing that could have happened after I got laid off from my teaching position. Just everything turned around and it was, it was awesome. So I feel like we brought a small part of the crafting, the contemporary crafting world to Indianapolis and um, I've made good things happen for myself here as well and developed all these amazing relationships.